Lucy started her daily walk to work, feeling the weight of her growing belly with, e with each step. The journey felt longer and more challenging every day as her pregnancy progressed. Despite the difficulties, she kept moving, determined to reach her destination. Dan watched as Lucy set out every morning, insisting that walking was good for her and the baby. He believed the exercise would keep her healthy and strong. Each time Lucy voiced her discomfort, Dan would dismiss it with a wave, saying it was all part of the process. You're doing great, he'd say, giving her a peck on the cheek. It's just a little walk, you'll be fine. Lucy's parents were less convinced about the benefits of her daily walks. They frequently voiced their concerns about her walking such a long distance while heavily pregnant. It's, it's too much for you, her mother would say. You need rest at this stage, her father would nod in agreement, worrying about the added stress on her body. They urged her to find another way to get to work, perhaps a bus or ride sharing. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Dan dismissed their worries, asserting that Lucy was strong and capable. He was adamant that Lucy could handle the trek, even as her pregnancy progressed. To him, their concerns seemed overblown. At work, Lucy's colleagues began to notice her fatigue. And she arrived at the office looking worn out, with noticeable bags under her eyes. Like one day feeling more drained than usual. And than usual. Lucy confided in her close friend, Julia. Over lunch, she explained how exhausting the daily walks were becoming. That's too much, especially now, Julia said. You, should, you shouldn't have to do this. You need to talk to Dan again about it. Following Julia's advice, Lucy decided to talk to Dan again. That evening, Lucy tried to persuade Dan to let her take the bus instead of walking. I'm exhausted, Dan. Dan nodded, but his response was firm. Lucy, we've talked about this. Walking is good for you and the baby his refusal was unwavering, and he dismissed her complaints, insisting yet again that it was for her own good. Over time, Dan became increasingly controlling, dismissing every concern Lucy voiced. Lucy felt trapped, forced to adhere to his demands despite her growing discomfort. Each morning, she set out on the long walk, feeling more isolated and controlled than ever before. Lucy's parents, concerned about Dan's adamant insistence on the walking, decided to delve deeper. They started by casually asking Lucy more about Dan's reasoning, hoping to uncover something concrete. Dancing something was off. They couldn't let it rest. They began to observe Dan's behavior more closely, lurking in the background, trying to stitch together fragments of information that Lucy occasionally let slip during conversations. As Lucy's parents dug deeper, they uncovered inconsistencies in Dan's explanations about their financial activities. His reasons for not providing alternative transportation seemed hollow and evasive. They noticed discrepancies in their bank statements and unusual financial activities that Dan dismissed too quickly. They kept their discovery quiet, planning the next steps. Meanwhile, Lucy started to observe changes in Dan's behavior. He became more secretive and erratic, often staying late at work or slipping away for undisclosed errands. Lucy's parents finally summoned the courage to confront her about their concerns. They laid out what they had discovered, emphasizing their growing worries about Dan's behavior and financial discrepancies. Lucy, feeling cornered and defensive, tried to deflect their concerns. Dan would never do anything to hurt me or the baby she insisted, clinging to the last threads of her belief in him. Determined to protect Lucy, her parents decided to monitor Dan's actions more closely without alerting him. Lucy's parents dug even deeper, finding more troubling signs of Dan's unusual purchases and mysterious bank transactions. The amounts and items listed were inappropriate and unexplained. They had been careful up to this point, avoiding explicit questions but capturing every odd transaction. This new information painted a disturbing picture. They were convinced something more sinister was at play. Lucy started to grow suspicious of Dan's intentions. Each time she mentioned feeling worn out or needing a break, Dan's responses felt increasingly off. She noticed how he sidestepped her concerns with vague reassurances. The strain of daily walks was starting to show more clearly on Lucy. She began experiencing more severe symptoms from the stress and physical toll. Her feet constantly ached and she felt an overwhelming fatigue that seemed to worsen each day. A visit to the doctor raised immediate alarms. The stress and physical and physical strain from the daily walks were putting both Lucy and her baby at significant risk. The doctors sternly warned her about the potential dangers, emphasizing the urgent need to rest. They were clear continuing this routine could have dire consequences. And armed with medical advice, Lucy felt a newfound resolve to confront Dan, hoping he would finally understand the severity of the situation. As, however, Dan remained unyielding, using his charm and persuasive tactics to convince Lucy to keep walking. It's for your health, he insisted, drawing on the same well-worn arguments. Conflicted and exhausted, Lucy reluctantly resumed her daily routine, despite the increasing risks and her parents' desperate pleas. The situation had become intolerable for Lucy's parents. When they decided it was time to take more drastic measures to protect their daughter and unborn grandchild, 
Lucy's parents began compiling all the evidence of Dan's suspicious activities. And they gathered documents, recorded conversations, and kept a meticulous log of his movements and financial transactions. One evening, Lucy overheard a conversation between Dan and an unknown caller. She couldn't catch every word, but what she did hear troubled her deeply. Phrases like get it done and no loose end send sent a chill down her spine. She tiptoed away, her mind racing. This was the confirmation she dreaded something was definitely wrong. With her suspicions now bolstered, Lucy started closely monitoring Dan's actions. She took note of his every move, trying to find any clue that would reveal his real motives. Lucy's parents decided to dig deeper into Dan's insurance policies. They enlisted the help of a friend who worked in the industry. Astonishingly, they discovered that Dan had recently taken out a large life insurance policy on Lucy without her knowledge. The policy had alarming terms, highlighting that any accidental death would result in a significant payout. This finding confirmed their worst fears and heightened their urgency to protect Lucy. Armed with the new information, Lucy decided to confront Dan. She approached him calmly, asking about the insurance policy. Dan's reaction was immediate and intense he lashed out, accusing her of mistrust and invasion of privacy. One morning during her usual walk to work, Lucy felt unusually lightheaded, and she tried to push through the dizziness, but her body had reached its limit. Halfway there, she stumbled and fainted, collapsing onto the sidewalk. She was taken to the hospital, her condition critical due to the extreme stress and physical strain she had been under. Getting Lucy in the hospital was the final straw for her paraparents. The sight of her fragile state ignited a fierce determination within them. In secret, Lucy's parents contacted a lawyer who specialized in domestic issues and insurance fraud. They set up a discreet meeting to discuss their situation and explore their options. The lawyer listened carefully, noting every detail of Dan's suspicious behavior and the recent discovery of the insurance policies. The lawyer advised Lucy's parents to remain vigilant and not to confront Dan until they had more concrete evidence. She emphasized the importance of documenting every interaction and gathering as much information as possible. Back at home, Lucy reflected on her recent hospitalization. The incident forced her to reevaluate her situation and prioritize her safety and her baby's well-being. Lucy's parents finally made a breakthrough in their investigation. They discovered that Dan had been man manipulating insurance documents and involved in a fraudulent scheme to profit from Lucy's potential demise. Which, with solid proof in hand, they contacted law enforcement to present their findings. This moment marked the tipping point. Lucy's parents were combing through Dan's personal files when they stumbled upon a folder. Inside, they found documents outlining a chilling plan. Dan had detailed blueprints to stage an accident, aiming for a massive insurance payout by leveraging Lucy's policies. Realizing the immediate danger Lucy was in, her parents didn't waste a second. They rushed out of the house, hearts pounding. Driving through the traffic with a sense of urgency, they were determined to reach Lucy before it was too late. When Lucy's parents arrived, they finally managed to contact her and urged her to stay home from work. Confused but trusting her parents, Lucy called in sick and remained at home. She kept the doors locked and stayed away from the windows, unsure of what her parents had discovered but sensing their urgency. Dan arrived home to find Lucy had not gone to work. His face twisted with fury, and he demanded an explanation. And Lucy's calmness seemed to enrage him further as he stormed around the house, throwing accusations and making wild gestures. After Dan left the house in a fit of rage, Lucy's parents seized the moment to show her the evidence they had uncovered. They laid out the documents showing Dan's elaborate plan to stage an accident. Lucy's eyes widened as she read the heart-stopping details. Understanding the severity of the situation, Lucy felt a mix of fear and resolve. She knew she had to take immediate action to protect herself and her unborn child. It, Lucy's parents urged her to contact the police. They feared for her safety and the unborn child's life. With trembling hands, Lucy dialed 911. Her parents stood by her side, offering silent strength. She explained the peril she was in, detailing Dan's plan and the immediate threat to her safety. The urgency in her voice conveyed the seriousness of the situation to the dispatcher, who assured them help was on the way. Lucy's parents stayed by her side, providing unwavering support through the crisis. As the police arrived and took statements, her parents held her hands and reassured her constantly. The police arrived promptly and carefully listened to Lucy's story. Her parents present the collected evidence, including the documents detailing Dan's sinister plans. The officers take extensive notes and ask follow-up questions to clarify important details. They assure Lucy and her parents that this information will be taken seriously. Engine Mitch Glitz of Comforts Bisa Param on STURNN. Actually, Trenix, Thuring Sfry. After the gravity of the situation becomes clearer as the officers acknowledge the immediate need to protect Lucy and her unborn child from further danger, law enforcement begins investigating Dan's activities without delay. They scrutinize the incriminating documents and start piecing together the broader picture. They reach out to financial institutions and insurance and insurance companies, looking for contacts and previous instances of fraud that could link back to Dan. 
Dan senses that the walls are closing in on him, but he continues to act in a highly suspicious manner. He makes hurried phone calls, destroys potential evidence, and becomes increasingly paranoid. His erratic behavior only serves to confirm Lucy's and her parents' worst fears. Heirs. The police gather more evidence linking Dan to the fraud scheme. They discover bank records and emails that further incriminate him, revealing connections to other fraudulent activities. Each new piece of evidence strengthens the case against him, building a solid foundation for potential charges. Lucy starts the process of filing for a restraining order against Dan. Reported by her parents and legal advisors, she completes the necessary paperwork and submits it to the court. Arrangements for her to move in are quickly made, ensuring she has everything she needs to start fresh. This safe haven offers Lucy the peace of mind she desperately needs, far from the threat of Dan's erratic and dangerous behavior. And in the investigation reveals that Dan's actions were part of a larger fraudulent plan. Law enforcement uncovers a network of schemes, showcasing Dan's extensive criminal activities. Dan's plan involved staging an accident during Lucy's daily walk to work. It's he plotted to have her hit by a car and claim the insurance money. Lucy's parents realized the immediate danger their daughter was facing. An eerie sense of urgency gripped them as they pieced together Dan's deceitful plan. They contacted authorities to intervene before it was too late. Law enforcement responded promptly, understanding the gravity of the situation. Law enforcement intensified their efforts to apprehend Dan and protect Lucy. Police officers were dispatched to monitor Lucy's route and the area around her workplace. Dan was finally arrested after attempting to implement his fraudulent plan. He was caught in the act, unable to carry out the staged accident. The swift action of the police thwarted his attempt, and Dan was taken into custody. Lucy's parents breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that the immediate threat had been neutralized. The full extent of Dan's scheme came to light during his interrogation. Investigators uncovered detailed plans and evidence, connecting him to multiple fraudulent activities. Though shaken by your set of elites, it seemed like in which prank to be contentious to trust, she's the pre shepherdess you are sure in the Verzizrit sessions. On Ephraim Morning Dam was no longer a threat. Her sense of security gradually returned, and the constant fear began to fade. Supported by her parents and friends, she started to rebuild her life. The arrest was a significant turning point, allowing Lucy to focus on her well-being and the health of her unborn child. This collective goodwill eased the recovery process, allowing Lucy to focus on healing. And the community's unwavering support was a testament to the power of unity in the face of adversity. Lucy's bond with her parents strengthened, knowing their determination had thwarted a potentially tragic outcome. She moved forward with more caution, but also with a renewed sense of faith. They choose beast. The story serves as a strong reminder of the depths to which greed can drive an individual and the extraordinary strength of protective loved ones. It underscores the importance of vigilance and the power of community support in times of crisis. Lucy's experience is a testament to resilience, love, and the unyielding will to protect those we cherish.